Hello and welcome to another episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week with me, Mr Barton, where every week I try my very, very, very best to pick you out a delightful GCSE Maths question which has been kindly written for diagnostic questions by each of the exam bodies and we go through it because I've picked ones that are causing students no end of trouble on the website. So they've all got tiny little twists about them, okay? So the idea is that once you've got your head around this, once we've talked about it, you'll be much better prepared to face the tricky demands of the GCSE maths exam. So this question has been kindly provided by OCR and it goes a little something like this. Calculate the size of the length DC. So firstly, let's make sure we know what we're doing here. DC is that little length there. And the other thing I wanted to highlight is that diagram not drawn accurately. Why, it's annoying that, right, when you keep seeing that. Why did he put that on there? Well, that's to stop you just getting your ruler out and measuring it. Bit nasty, but there you go. Right, so the reason I think this question's causing problems is it's not entirely obvious what topic of maths it's on. I've got triangles there, so is it trigonometry? Is it Pythagoras? What's going on here? In fact, no, it's actually a question all about similar shapes. Now... I've got one piece of big advice for you here. If ever you sense it's a similar shape question, and you'll know if it's something about calculating lengths and you don't tend to have too many angles involved and it doesn't look like a trigonometry question. My single biggest piece of advice is, if it's a combined question like this, so it's like one shape, split it into two, all right? So let's have a look at how to do this now. <laughs> I'm saying it as if I can easily do it, but you, we know what my drawings are, right? Like horrendous. So let's have a look. So let's say I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna go there, and I'm gonna go there. So that's me attempt to do my first triangle. And then I'm gonna go bigger, I'm gonna go bigger, and I'm gonna go there, something like that. Not too bad. And let me get these sides labeled because without a label, it's pretty useless. So let's take my small triangle and let's say that's A at the top there. That's B there and that'll be E there. And let's take my bigger triangle. That's D there. That's A there and that's C there. And now I've got it like this. The question isn't too bad. Now I need some lengths. What do I know? Well, I know A to B is eight. Let's get that on there. And I know E to B is five centimeters. Let's get that on there. Okay, good. Uh, do I know A to D? No, but I, I couldn't care less about it. Do I know A to C? Well, yeah, I do. Is it four centimeters? No, it's not. Have a look, just be so careful. A to C is all the way along. So it's eight and four together. So it's gonna be 12 centimeters. And what have I been asked to work out? D to C. So that is the mystery number that I need at the end. Okay, so similar shapes. We've got to work out how we get from the smaller shape to the larger shape. And specifically, what do we multiply by? Because similar shapes are an enlargement scale factor and you multiply to get there. Okay, so eight multiplied by something is going to give me 12. Now this question is a, a technically a calculator paper for uh, on the calculator paper for OCR, but this could well come up on non-calc, so it's worth just trying to get ahead around this. So to find out that mystery number, I like to do a little bit of, it's kind of algebra, but not really. To get rid of a times by eight, I'm going to divide both sides by eight. So that's going to tell me that my mystery number is equal to 12 divided by eight. Now I know what you're thinking, what the flipping x 12 divided by eight, but treat it as a fraction, um, half top, half bottom, and all of a sudden you're getting six divided by four. Um, half top, half bottom again, three divided by two, and three divided by two is one whole and a half, or 1.5. So that tells me my scale factor is 1.5. So now to solve my question, and I think we'll go for a bit of light blue for this one. To get to what DC is equal to, all I've got to do is take EB, which is 5, so that's supposed to be a C, and then times it by my scale factor, which is 1.5. Five lots of 1.5. Couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to treat myself. I quite like doing this. I'm going to say that's the same as doing 10 lots of 1.5 and then halving my answer. Always good to try different ways out. So 10 lots of 1.5. I think hopefully a 15 divide by two and that's gonna give me 7.5 centimeters. Hopefully that's one of the answers. Whew, I'm a lucky man, there it is there. But you know what I'm gonna to say to you, don't you even be thinking of going away now because this is where the fun starts. Where do the wrong answers come from? Why on earth 
might somebody come up with nine? Well, I reckon they get nine if they don't know about these scale factors. If they think to get from eight to 12, you simply add on four, eight plus four is 12, then they're just gonna be adding on four, five plus four, nine. But no, you multiply with similar shapes. What about 6.5? Well, 6.5 is a little unlucky. I reckon for 6.5, they figured out this scale factor, big tick, but then they've gone and added the scale factor on instead of times in it. Five plus 6.5, no, 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 no. 2.5, where the flipping heck does something like 2.5 come from? Well, I reckon what they've done here is they've seen that to get from eight to four, you halve it. So to get to five to that, they've halved it as well to get 2.5. But no, 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 no. Take it as separate shapes and you'll see that cannot be the right answer. All of which brings me on to the final bit where I like to try and think of a different question, a different, sorry, answer that hasn't come up yet. 10 was the one that struck me here. I can see a lot of students getting 10 here and it's related to this answer for D. To get from eight to four, you divide by two. So maybe they say, well, to get to five, you divide by two to get 2.5. Nah, 2.5 is too small. So instead of dividing by two, I'm gonna times by two. Before you know it, they've got 10. No, not right. So my single biggest piece of advice here, when you get similar shape questions, separate it up into two different shapes and look for your multiplying factor and you'll be good to go. If you need some more practice, try the rest of this quiz out on diagnostic questions. It's completely free and it's great fun. Why wouldn't you? And then also, if you want some videos, worksheets, all that kind of stuff, hop on mrbartmaths.com and you will be laughing. And I will see you for another question of the week next week. Take care. Bye for now.